Armed conflicts have major effects and grave consequences that are difficult to deal with. During armed conflicts, civilians suffer from death, displacement, sexual violence, destruction of facilities, diseases, and so on. The occurrence of an outbreak is one of the major consequences of war. All around the world, several outbreaks were recorded following or during armed conflicts. In 2001, for instance, more than half of outbreaks of international importance occurred in conflict zones. In Afghanistan, malaria was well controlled before civil strife began in 1979. However, after the start of the conflict, the disease has resurged with two up to three million cases per year. According to a study by Frontiers in Public Health, there was a surge and intensification of armed conflict in Libya, Syria, and Yemen, particularly in the first four up to six months of the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. This resulted in a hidden spread of the pandemic during the early stage, which was exacerbated later, resulting in a high number of infected cases. And this led to a large number of otherwise preventable deaths as the healthcare system in these countries were targeted during the conflicts four years ago. The Yemen cholera outbreak has been driven by years of conflict and became the largest in epidemiologically recorded history, with more than 1.2 million cases recorded in less than a year since the beginning of the outbreak in 2017. Hospitals in most large cities, including this one in Thais, are crammed with patients. This is an uh, 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 overload of the uh, collapsed uh, health system in Thais after two years of, of war. Another example is the conflict in Democratic Republic of Congo. The 2018 up to 2020 Ebola epidemic in Democratic Republic of Congo was declared a public health emergency of international concern by WHO. With the conflict complicating containment efforts, thousands of people died due to the outbreak. Conflict-related displacements complicated the tracking of cases and increased the risk of spreading the disease within and beyond Ebola-affected regions. Key violent events such as as mass killings, deadly attack on Ebola treatment centers, correlated with increased infections and fatalities, weakened operational capacity of health facilities also added to the disaster. Earlier this month, a treatment center in the city of Batumba was attacked twice within days. Soldiers carried one of the suspects away from the scene. A healthcare worker was wounded, a police officer killed. The conflict in Tigray has caused a devastating impact on the formerly growing healthcare system. During the first eight months of the year and a half long ongoing deadly war, health facilities all around Tigray were deliberately looted, vandalized, and destroyed by Ethiopian and Eritrean forces as part of their genocidal campaign. Since June of last year, Tigray continues to suffer under brutal siege imposed by the Ethiopian and Eritrean governments, blocking food, medicine, and other essential items from getting into Tigray. Due to this, and the disruption to root vaccination, children in Tigray are under enormous threat. As confirmed by a WHO report, over 200,000 children in Tigray have gone without vaccine in the past year. This means the lives of newborns and children under five years are at risk as they are prone to infectious diseases that are leading to a high rate of mortality and a long-term disability like blindness, deafness and the like. Vaccines for measles, tuberculosis and polio used to be put here, but now we don't have anything. We used to vaccinate children for measles every Wednesday. We gave them their three months, nine months and one year shots. We provided vaccinations every week. So many people used to come here every week, but there's no one here because we don't have any medication. Dr. Hagos Godefai, head for Tigray Bureau of Health, says that more than 84% of vaccines in Tigray were given to children under the age of 5 to protect them from several vaccine-preventable diseases. But these vaccines are currently non-existent. There are multiple reasons. There is no medication. No vaccines have been available for the past 17 months apart from some cities. In rural areas, where much of the population is found, there are no vaccines available. This is primarily because the Ethiopian government had not made them available. The termination of vaccines, poor nutritional status due to the man-made starvation, and the collapse of public health infrastructures might lead to the unfolding of catastrophe, and many fear that such a catastrophe in one corner might spill over to the already trembling region. Understandably, the international community and organizations such as the WHO need to do preventive works before the much-feared catastrophe claims the already starving lives.